Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, let's go through some data, touch on a couple things, and take some questions. Uh, unfortunately, over the last 24 hours, we have lost a member of our community to COVID-19. 92-year-old uh, male, uh, pre-existing conditions, uh, but certainly uh, painful. And so uh, I just want to think of him, his family, Mm -hmm. uh, and everybody we've lost in this process, whether it's COVID-related, non-COVID-related, uh, we've all had to sacrifice. Many of us have yet to be able to really mourn and come to closure with the loss of life in this pandemic. So certainly want to think of them. This virus has impacted our seniors with pre-existing conditions. Uh, this, this we know. Uh, the data tells the story, unfortunately, uh, and we need to be rigorous uh, to make sure uh, that we do everything we can moving forward uh, to starve this virus and not let it uh, attack the way it has. Uh, looking at uh, testing numbers from uh, the last 24 hours, 2,227 tests in Onondaga County. Uh, so that uh, very good testing. Uh, again, our region's number needs to be 775 daily. Uh, we essentially are three times what the region number is. Uh, this helps us uh, really identify these hidden pockets of the virus. Uh, we, every, we're still every now and then coming up with asymptomatic cases. Uh, we find them more in senior facilities, whether it's staff or residents. Uh, but by finding those asymptomatic pockets, we can then quickly quarantine, contact trace, put that aside. And because of this work, we're seeing the infection rates continue to go down uh, little bit by little bit, uh, and uh, even as we've come back together. And that's what we've learned. Throughout this process, remember, uh, we always thought in restart, each phase, uh, things would get worse, but a little bit worse. Uh, and we had to take that risk because we had to start learning how to live with this virus uh, and going back to work and getting our economy going. Uh, remarkably, uh, the community has rallied, and with every restart, things have gotten better. And that's because the community continued to do the right thing. Every once in a while, we would get off track a little bit, but quickly get on track. Uh, and it's just simply remarkable what's happened. Uh, looking at hospitalization numbers, 14 people are in the hospital. Uh, that number's down two from yesterday. Uh, five of these individuals are uh, waiting to return to a senior facility. Uh, they no longer need hospital care, but via the governor's executive order, they need to test negative for COVID before they go back into the senior facility. So really when you look at the number of individuals in the hospital right now related to COVID that are uh, being treated uh, actively, we have nine individuals in the hospital uh, being treated for COVID, uh, three in the ICU. So please uh, keep these three individuals in your thoughts and prayers uh, so that we can get them well and all these folks, get them back home. But when you look at the hospital data, uh, we haven't been here in a while. So. Uh, again, our medical community is getting better at working with folks when they're sick, when they're coming in. Uh, overall, uh, the demographics of folks that uh, drive hospital cases, uh, specifically seniors with pre-existing conditions, uh, the percentage of cases have, has really dropped over the last few months, uh, and that has certainly helped us uh, with these numbers. Uh, when we look at uh, overall positive cases, uh, 3,409 positive cases since March 16th. Mm -hmm. That number's up 11 since yesterday. Out of the 11 cases, two household contacts, two senior living facility, uh, one case related to travel, the state of Nevada. Uh, I'm not sure where in Nevada, but my idea is uh, origin of case, uh, yet to be determined. We have one still being contact traced, five from uh, community uh, spread. Out of those five, uh, we, they are all unknown sources of community spread. So again, when this happens, we get a case, we immediately uh, do contact tracing. Uh, we have a robust team that does that, put folks into uh, any direct contacts going to quarantine. Uh, and then certainly we then monitor those folks for symptoms. Uh, some cases, uh, if we think there's uh, exposure via contact tracing uh, that we want to get uh, for necessary uh, 
get out in front of it, we mm -hmm. go through and we start testing. Uh, but overall, 11 cases is very good. Uh, daily infection rate, 0.49. Uh, fantastic infection rate for a community our size. Seven-day average for Onondaga County, 0.8. Uh, again, uh, just uh, simply remarkable. And I, and I uh, it, it's tough to reflect back. Uh, we've been through a lot of this together. Uh, in each mm -hmm. step of this process, we go through phases where uh, we're talking about specific things, uh, specific things in front of us that we need to move forward. Uh, but certainly, if you think back to April, uh, when we didn't know where this was going and we were uh, totally in the response, mm -hmm. infection rate very high, and you asked yourselves, what does our community look like at a 0.8% infection rate, uh, something under than one, uh, what, what does it look like? Are we back? Are, are, are people uh, back to work? Are kids back mm -hmm. to school? Uh, I think we know what the answer is. Uh, because we, uh, but now that we're here, it's still tough when we're going through uh, different parts of uh, reopening and, and going through uh, the next steps for our community uh, to learn how to live with this virus. Uh, looking uh, at active cases, uh, we now are at 120 active cases. This is down four from yesterday. Uh, we uh, certainly, tu Tuesday's active case number of 118 was the lowest since March 26th. Uh, 120 is almost right there. Uh, just really mm -hmm. remarkable progress uh, where we're getting the number of cases down so low that we're almost able to uh, each week uh, recover as many individuals as new cases each week. So uh, again, I just want to thank uh, our health department and under the leadership of Dr. Gupta and all of our uh, amazing team with this. Uh, this is just remarkable work and the community owes you a great deal mm -hmm. of gratitude. Recovery is up 14. Uh, looking at uh, total cases uh, to date, 1,989 uh, female, 1,420 male, 260 under 19, 654 in their 20s, 465 in their 30s, 415 in their 40s, 507 in their 50s, 397 in their 60s, 292 in their 70s, 261 in their 80s, and 158 in their 90s. Uh, so uh, those, have, those percentages have changed uh, over the course of this process, certainly uh, when our nursing homes and senior facilities were being hit very hard, uh, that, that those cases got weighted towards uh, the uh, 70, 80, and 90-year-old demographics. Uh, we really made tremendous progress there. Uh, now the cases are weighted towards our younger demographics again uh, as they are more social. Certainly tomorrow looks like to be, uh, you know, an interesting day uh, with the governor's announcements with school reopening plans. If the uh, decision is to reopen, the governor gave guidance earlier uh, with data metrics, 5%. Uh, if you're under 5%, uh, you should be able to go. Again, that's his final decision. Uh, certainly we are under 5%, well below 5%. 0.878, uh, seven-day average, essentially 0.5 over the last three days. Um, so uh, we'll see. We'll see if the plans that were uh, put forward get approved or if there's any modifications. Uh, certainly one thing we do know is that we are, uh, have been working uh, overtime trying to make sure that when, uh, if the, the, the light is green tomorrow for school reopening, that we'll work with each district that wants help uh, with testing employees and then working with them with testing strategies during the year uh, in their buildings. And so uh, how would this happen? Uh, our emergency management team would work uh, with each district with different labs and different partners of ours. Uh, they would then work with their, uh, certainly their uh, employees, uh, and then we would want to get the adults done first uh, and then move into demographics uh, of students where we've seen cases and where, uh, especially where we've seen recent cases. Uh, so certainly we all know over the 4th of July uh, week leading into it and that weekend uh, we had situations where we had high school juniors and seniors and graduates uh, socializing and uh, we had uh, small little mm -hmm. clusters uh, that happened there. So certainly we'd want to address that. 
Uh, but we uh, are ready to do this. We're ready to partner. We want to do this. Uh, how do we uh, know that COVID is not in the buildings? We test. And uh, so uh, going, uh, that, that's, uh, there, there's no 100 percent uh, risk mitigation plan uh, in anything. Uh, but the lower we can uh, get things uh, by wearing proper PPE, by sanitizing, by testing, uh, that puts us in a better position than the already great position we are uh, with a 0.8 infection rate. It gets it better. So we're here to partner. Uh, Syracuse University, uh, I've gotten some comments, obviously well reported. I'm pleased with the university cracking down on some of our young people who uh, haven't got the memo yet that we're in a pandemic. Uh, we are working with the university uh, very, very well on plans. Um, there is no plan that's going to be 100 percent effective. And we understand that some young people will come into the community uh, that may not do the right thing. And they may say they're quarantining and they may end up going out on a quarantine. Um, but what we are doing is we have a plan. We're going to enforce the plan. These young people have been tested, and they'll be tested again. Uh, for the most part, the majority of out-of-state travelers uh, coming into the community from these hotspots are coming in on August 17th, I believe, that weekend. Um, that does not mean there aren't people now. I've seen the same postings and everything everybody else has, uh, but we're on it. That doesn't mean we're going to you know, bat 1,000%. But in baseball, most people who bat 300% are in the Hall of Fame. But we're going to bat much, much higher than 300% on this. We're going to be all over this. Uh, the university has done a nice job setting the tone. Uh, we're going to set the tone. We're going to have teams that are going to go and make sure these kids are making good decisions. Uh, and then we're also, uh, if they make bad decisions, we're going to, uh, you break a quarantine order, you're going to get a fine. And so that's what's going to happen. Uh, we take this very seriously, and I know the neighbors in the neighborhood around the university are concerned. Uh, we take this as seriously as you do, um, and we're going to be all over this. So saying that, uh, the, I read some reports related to some comments today uh, related to gyms. Certainly our position mm -hmm. remains the same. We believe gyms should uh, be open with regulations mm -hmm. now. Uh, I had a conversation with uh, the governor's council. Uh, they told me indefinitely does not mean forever. They're still reviewing uh, ways to do this and do this safely. Uh, I've certainly offered Onondaga County as a pilot community to do anything related to opening up gyms uh, and or any other industry that's still closed. Uh, let's figure out a plan. Let's figure out a way to get there. Uh, in my opinion and the opinion of many, uh, we probably won't get this infection rate much lower. So uh, we need to try. We've got to take a step. Uh, some of the threats, the outside threats to our community uh, that the governor's talked about are real. We talk, you hear him talk about travel from outside of the states and everything. Uh, that's real. We've had cases uh, related to travel. Most of it's our, our residents going out to other states and coming home. But that's baked into our number. So all that, that threat is already in our numbers. So we still think like we can do this safely. Uh, let's do a pilot program here in Onondaga County uh, that the state's comfortable with to see if it works. And then uh, certainly then uh, if it's a model that works, the rest of the state can uh, go and implement it. So saying that, happy to take questions. For the SU students, if they break yeah, quarantine? I believe it would be similar to our other fines for any. It's, got, it's the same across the board. If you break a quarantine right now, uh, or uh, whether it's an isolation or quarantine, you, you can get fined. So it's the same thing. We will treat these quarantines the same as a COVID quarantine. Uh, and uh, so uh, there's a quarantine letter that these students should be getting from Dr. Gupta uh, in our health department when they come into town. So. Uh, that's something that we're, everybody's taking this very seriously. Remember, most of these students, that doesn't mean you're not seeing students there. The students you see in neighborhoods may not be from these states. They may be from other states. They may not be from SU. There's other colleges. We're working with all of them on contact tracing, uh, and we're working with all of them on their testing protocols 
Syracuse SUNY ESF teamed up, Lemoyne's teamed up. Uh, they're, th think about this. These kids that are coming back in, all of them are getting tested. Uh, that's not every resident. We can't say that about every resident of Onondaga County, but we can about these kids. And then mo the ones coming in from hot states get tested again. So that's two tests um, in a short period of time. So uh, that's good, good risk mitigation. Uh, and so, uh, but there certainly, I've seen it, I think you've reported it, there's certainly some folks that come in. They, maybe they don't understand what quarantine means. That doesn't mean you get in and hang out and go to Trader Joe's right after, right? If you need to go to Trader Joe's, uh, there's infrastructure built up there. The university needs to help you with that. Um, and uh, we're going to take it seriously. It's, uh, we're not going to have uh, a situation pop up where we're, we're going to see uh, little clusters pop up. Uh, because of those types of things. Eventually, there's, Syracuse University will have a student that gets it. They're going to probably get it from living in this community. The infection rate's so low that it's probably safer for them to be here than in their own communities. Um, but these things will happen, just like uh, in my own county workforce. We've had cases, right? It, we have a big workforce. It happened. What did we do? We responded. We quarantined everybody that should be there. Uh, they went into a quarantine, we got everybody better, we get back to life. Uh, at no point did we shut down operations. Um, so these are all things. Uh, we've been doing this for a while, so we know how to do this, and uh, we'll get through it all. Brian, you mentioned again um, the counties working with the school districts to organize testing. And, and one thing I'm wondering is um, will teachers and other school employees be required to be tested and will K through 8 students be required? Yeah, that's not my call. So uh, the that's I don't even think that's the district's call, right? I, I think um, if you're uh, and I had a couple reps from uh, one rep uh, on social media reached out to me last night about uh, testing what trying to understand that yet I haven't we haven't connected yet, but what, what we will do is we will put together rapid testing infrastructure uh, and work with the school districts, probably with our mobile testing lab, going to a district near you, right? So uh, there may be one day we're doing three different districts. Uh, there may be one day where we're just doing one district because of how big they are. Uh, but then during that time, just like we've done elsewhere, all the employees can come and get tested. And so if you're concerned about going back to work, whether it's five days, four days, three days, two days, um, get your colleagues out. Make it a thing. Go. Get every, every employee in the building. Get every adult in the building tested. Uh, the adults have gotten it more than the kids have. That doesn't mean the kids can't get it, and that doesn't mean that if a kid has it, they can't spread it. But right now, if the kid doesn't have it going into the school uh, year, then certainly with the other piece of this that we're talking about, Jim, is we got to work this out too. And on the back side of your question about kids, parents got to sign off on that, right? Uh, that's, that's a parent's call. Um, so that's going to be their call. But we want to make it available. But at first we want to get the staff done. And then we want to do it surgically uh, with maybe go going to the demographics where we know we've seen the most cases. And that's going to be our 16, 17, and 18 year olds. Uh, but then during the year, there's got to be something that we're going to offer, whether districts take us up on it or not, uh, some sort of uh, check in to make sure things are going well. Try to find these hidden pockets, other proactive testing. In, in terms of the school district employees, Whose call would it be? I mean, could a district require all employees to get tested? Or I think that would probably fall to negotiations with bargaining units. It would be uh, certainly, I know uh, in my own operation, there's probably certain employees I could mandate get tested. Uh, but then there's other employees that I would probably have to negotiate that with my unions. So I'm, I'm making an assumption. We know what happens sometimes when you do that. But the, uh, I'm, that would be my assumption, is that the, uh, this would need to be kind of a voluntary, proactive step. And if it's a proactive, smart step. And the mobile rapid testing lab or unit, who operates 
So we would partner with some of our partners. We would then do the testing there at the mobile testing site. The tests would then go to some of the rapid testing infrastructure we had. Uh, that rapid testing infrastructure will most likely turn those tests around within 24 hours. Uh, then that's when uh, certainly the, uh, the, the tested individuals would start hearing. Uh, back to school testing will be, uh, from a proactive testing standpoint, our priority in county government. Who's, um, which lab is handling all the SU testing? Do you know? Syracuse University, uh, my understanding is they used uh, a, the mail-in, the initial mail-in uh, with, with Let's Get Checked, I believe is that company, company that uh, we've been talking to as well. Uh, they go, the, the, the test is done at home. It's then mailed back to their lab. They then get the results to a database with SU, our health department, uh, and then uh, they, when they're coming to campus, I'm not sure if they're using their own testing infrastructure or if they teamed up with uh, Upstate or not on that. We'd have to look into that. I'm not sure, the people, when they came in on Saturday, who was testing, I'm not sure who, exactly who that was. But the let's get checked got mailed to all the students back at their homes, wherever they live. Other questions? Why did the town of Camilla shut down youth baseball and softball? Uh, you'd have to ask the town of Camilla's that. Do you know who made that decision? Who would make that decision? The town of Camilla's made that decision. So um, I, I'm, I don't know the history. Uh, certainly uh, there were some, a couple complaints. We, whenever we get a complaint about a business or a, uh, an organization, no matter what it is, uh, we're going to forward that complaint depending on the complaint. If it's a physical distancing issue, uh, we then, uh, why we're forwarding it is so that people can learn from it and get better at it. Uh, and then uh, certainly if it's a situation where we think there's a public health risk, then that's when we go and we start the enforcement side of that. Uh, related to this issue, I believe we saw some complaints. We forwarded it to the town. The town made a decision. It's their property. Have you talked to the town park? I have not specifically talked to the town directly. I'm sure members of my team have. Can you talk a little bit more about gyms and how Onondaga County could potentially serve as a pilot community to open? Yeah, it, we're a good, we're a good uh, community, a good county. We have a city. We have suburbs, affluent, uh, working class, rural communities. So we're like New York State as a whole. Uh, and we, I understand that the state's struggling with this. Um, we've been struggling with this for a while. And so the, I learned about the comments uh, today. I, I wanted some clarification because I knew I'd be standing in front of you all. Uh, and the best I got is indefinitely doesn't mean forever and that they're looking at ways uh, to try to put something in front of the governor. Um, I offered to be part of a solution. And uh, I don't, when you look at the, where the data is, in hypotheticals, just the math, if you have 50 people in a room, you probably don't have COVID. Uh, that's what the data tells you. So is there ways you could do it with limited capacity, do it for a period, uh, see how it goes, and then you move to the next step. Um, whatever it is, we're willing to help out in our government and regulate it and report back into the state uh, to try to get these things open. Public health is more than COVID-19. And it's, I know it's tough for us to remember that in this time, but right now uh, the mental health of the community has been challenged all over the place. It's being challenged now. Every time we have a new uh, part of restart, uh, people are nervous, they're anxious. Uh, having gyms open could be very helpful for that. Uh, certainly, when we look at uh, some, we've we've talked about it. I know that uh, I think Jim's wrote in stories about it, and you have all reported about our Q1 opioid uh, overdoses. Um, that was Q1. That pandemic was with us for, you know, three weeks. Um, I, I'm concerned about that data in Q2. So when when you have these things going on, 
there's, uh, this reminds me when we were pushing for churches too, besides the fact that people need to go to church, having, uh, ha having those voices in these hard times with uh, the religious leaders uh, helps the mental health of the community. Uh, the gyms do too, and you have business owners who are struggling. Uh, and I believe the data is as good as it's going to get until we have a vaccine. And this might even be the data when we have a vaccine. It might not get better than this, but we have a treatment then. That's what the difference is. So I think that uh, we can find a way to yes, and I think we'll, be, we'll do anything we can to be a partner in that. Yeah. Yeah, so right now, as we speak in Washington, there's been a little bit of movement re related to the stimulus bill. Uh, my understanding is that the White House has put state and local governments on the table for the first time. The number is, uh, I think, $150 billion combined. So two things there. How much does the states get? So New York State's got their own problems. So does that mean that the state gets some money, even if it's not enough, that they're cut to the county government right now and to the city government's 20 percent? They're saying 20 percent across the board. So if they get enough money that their hole now has been cut by 10 percent, does that mean our cut goes down 10 percent? Um, that's helpful, right? Uh, the second is the rest of the locals, so cities and counties, are different in every state. Some state cities have health departments, and in Speaker Pelosi's district, that's what her city does. Her city does a lot of the work we do. So the way this formula is structured is not necessarily equal to all governments. So in the current formula, again, this may, that we saw before out of the HEROES Act, the city of Syracuse actually did better than the county of Onondaga. To me, does that make sense? No. We were losing more revenue. We have more costs. Am I happy for my friends in the city of Syracuse? Yes. Um, so what does that mean? Uh, under $150 billion, if that's the number from the states and then the locals, we'll get something. Maybe we don't get cut as much as the state of New York. We will still need to restructure under that number. Uh, restructure less probably. But uh, if that number gets higher, uh, you know, 250, 300, 400, Maybe we can survive this thing, uh, but the the when is in August. There's uh, certainly once we know what our number is, once we know uh, where this is going. We got a sales tax payment uh, notification yesterday. Uh, when we were, it was for a period of June and July, and essentially that's when phase two is going to phase three. You're starting to go up. So our negative pay, last payment was negative 20. That one went to negative 12.7 percent. So uh, later phase three, hopefully our next payments are more than negative 10, negative 8 percent. But that's a massive number. That's 45, 60 million dollars, depending on where it all goes. So when you look at it all, uh, what's on the table now in D.C. will help, but it won't solve our problems. Uh, so we'll wait and see. But uh, if we know this weekend what the number looks like, if it's done this weekend, um, certainly the next part of uh, the early part of next week we'll be focusing in on uh, the decisions that we have not wanted to make. We will make them. We'll make them quickly uh, to send over to the legislature. Other questions? Uh, I just want to thank the community. Uh, again, uh, a lot of serious things going on. This is very serious overall. We've made tremendous progress. Everybody should be proud. That we're doing this. A little bit of uh, humor. Uh, certainly uh, our young people who uh, were looking at having a very depressing week going into this week with the potential banning of TikTok uh, are very happy still. My daughter Maddie is very happy. Her TikTok app and videos are going on uh, right now. Uh, 
I was going, if, if TikTok got banned, she was going to demand that I put forward some of her impersonations of some of our nat national political leaders, which are very funny. Um, but it hasn't been banned yet, so uh, my 10-year-old Maddie has not been able to twist my arm that way yet. But uh, certainly uh, our, our, our tweens are really, really happy this week that they still got their TikTok. So uh, everybody, please be safe. Um, we're going to get through this all. It's tough, but we're getting there.